morning everybody we're here at the petro pass in thompson looks like i'm the last one left in the parking lot great all right so we got this uh light load on my trailer i'm gonna go deliver that across the street right now and head back the snowstorm has hit the south i'm up here in thompson manitoba no snow here yet but it is foggy I'm really hoping that uh, it's not going to be too bad, but I can pretty much guarantee that we're going to be driving into snow tonight. I hope that the snow is going to be kind of dying down by that time, but we are missing a lot of the storm by being up here. So, so far that plan has worked, but we do have to go back south. We'll see what happens. Let's go get this freight off the trailer first and then we'll worry about heading back. Sitting here waiting. There's nobody around. It's a massive, massive place. And uh, there's no signs telling me where to go. I called the number that I was given and uh, it doesn't exist anymore. Like, okay, I can figure this out. I went on to Google, right? Google's got all the answers. Yeah. And Google looked up this place, found the phone number. The phone number sent me to like an automated voice system where you know, press nine for this, press four for this. It says press nine to speak to the operator or something, or to speak to the reception or something, right? So I'm like, nine. It's like, rings for two seconds and says, this number is no longer available. Click, hangs up. And every option I had led me to that. They have no phone number listed anywhere. Weird, right? So, uh,. I had to walk over and find their security building because they aren't in their security shack. So I had to walk over to the main office building, track down a security guard and tell them what was going on. And they're sending an escort here for me now. I think this is my guy showing up here. I'm probably on the wrong side. Oh, well, it's been a little bit of a frustrating situation, but I think we're all settled now. There's a guy here gonna come talk to me. We figure it out, right? That's our job, that's what we do. We figure it out. When things get tough, you figure it out. He's gonna come and talk to me. Yeah, here he comes. That's my little escort there. So he's gonna guide me into this plant here. It's a massive, massive place with big signs everywhere. Authorized entry only, authorized entry only. Do not enter, private property. We reserve the right to search all vehicles for illegal paraphernalia and stuff like that. So it's one of those places. It's okay though. I'll be in and out of here quick. He's just gonna bring me to the main warehouse. I'm gonna get these two bundles off my trailer and I'm out of here. I promise I won't be any trouble. The only trouble I was was when I was trying to figure out who to talk to and where the humans were. I found the humans. They were hiding. Got a new escort now. They traded off. The relay race spring trucker Josh to his destination. We're going way back into the bush. That's the trouble where they're gonna unload me here at this little shop. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll go flying right past and keep going. Maybe they'll switch off and there'll be another escort. <laughs> How many escorts does it take to get trucker Josh to his unloading point? Success! Field goal! I don't watch football! How's it going, guys? I'm excited because I got unloaded, and that was very confusing and very hard on my brain. But here we are, we figured it out. That's what we do! We figure it out! Empty trailer behind us once again. And they covered me for coming up here and going back empty. So that's what happens very often with Northern loads. And uh, this is the way it is. Works out for me as the driver I'm taking care of. So off we go. Hopefully it doesn't snow too bad because I got no freight on the trailer and it's gonna be a little bit slippery and snowy and blizzardy. This is like a whole community in here. 
This is such a big place. more snow here than we have up north. I had my map open there to make sure I was uh, going the right way. I'm pretty sure I go this way and then I go to the second stoplight and turn left. If I can get through all this slushy snow. still very nice here. It's only minus one Celsius. It's about 28 Fahrenheit or so. And that's exactly why it's going to be snowing later. It's already snowing back home. I talked to uh, my wife and my dad. They're both saying it's coming down pretty hard already. I really hope that it passes by by the time I get down there. I'm 800 kilometers from the yard, 500 miles. Hey, this is a bumpy road, yikes. It's all the snow that's packed on it, right? around the north side of Winnipeg here right now. About 
about 20 minutes from our yard. It was actually an all right drive down. The worst of the snowstorm was north of Asher in Manitoba. Uh, actually, it was north of Grand Rapids, between Grand Rapids and uh, Thompson. We got through that in an hour or two, and then it was clear sailing for the rest of the day down, trip down. So I've got a new assignment. We're going back to Kenora and back to Brainerd. I got another one, another rounder. So I think what's going to happen, it's not set in stone yet for the backhaul, but for tomorrow it's set in stone. I'm going to go grab a trailer tonight, a step deck. Hopefully I can find one there. Hook onto that. We're going to go to Kenora, sleep there. Load up first thing in the morning, head down to Brainerd, hopefully get unloaded tomorrow afternoon. If we don't make it in time, it's the next morning. Either way, it'll work from there. I believe we're going back to Thief River Falls and then home. And that should get us home in time for the weekend. Well, it's all working out pretty good, I think. It's a nice smooth week. I got an extra day in because we started on Sunday. But uh, I'm also going to be home next Monday. We're getting a new window installed in our house and uh, I've got to move some things around I want to be there when the installer gets there we'll talk about that more as that gets closer we're back at the yard that's the van trailer right there we're not taking this one though we're just parked right right beside this one just to say hi to 5101 hello I have a better reason though <laughs> you'll see in a second I grabbed a step deck, I've still got to clear it off a bit, it's got a little bit of snow on it, but hooked that up. This is the trailer I just dropped here, 541. I need my tarps from there onto here. That's why I came and parked right beside here. Work smarter, not harder. Alright. Don't need this trailer anymore. I should have kept the step deck I had the other day. That's what I should have done. But oh well. They wanted me to take a flat up there. I think we all thought it was going to be a little bit more freight. It turned out to be a lot less. Oh, tarps are probably about 50 pounds each or so. That's what I'm thinking. <sighs> Gotta grab this. What's this here? Oh yeah, don't fall off, Josh. There we go. Let's leave that there for now. Then I don't have to lift them off the ground and, you know... Life is too short to work so hard. You know? You gotta find ways to make things easier on yourself. Go. Whew. Okay. I need this thing now. Put that down over there. Ratchet those down and we'll be off to Kenora. The trick is not to fall off and break your neck. That's that's the trick. If you can do that, you're golden. Right through. Oh, we can put it through here, I guess. <laughs> this is how I do it. Because this strap that I'm using here doesn't have a, a hook on one end, right? Someone can cut it off. And normally I would just throw it out then because it'd be garbage, but no, no. If you have a spare ratchet on both sides, oh, and you just ratchet it down on both sides then. It's like a double whammy. Just pull that through there. Remember, strap's always inside the rub rail. That's what this rub rail is here for. I had some feedback or a comment on my last video where I mentioned that. And I said, that's not for protecting the straps, that's for protecting the trailer. You really think this thin piece of aluminum here is to protect the trailer? The trailer's 
solid. It doesn't need protecting. It can protect itself. The straps, however, that's why they have holes in here, right? It's specifically so that the strap goes between here. That way, let's say you take a corner a little too tight, you rub up against a pole. Oops, or even worse, let's say somebody sideswipes you on the highway. They get a little too close or they lose control beside you on the ice and they start spinning around and then they bump up against your trailer here, right? Well, if you have your straps on the outside of the rub rail, what's gonna happen when that car or vehicle rubs up along here, it's gonna rip every single one of your straps off your load. Now guess what? Now your freight is unsecured and they're spinning off into the ditch and your freight on here is loose and falling off into traffic. That's why they have the rub rail. Just in case if something rubs against you, it's not going to take out your straps. See, now if a, if a car comes on here and rubs up against here, hits you while it's wiping out, goes into the ditch, your straps are protected, your load is protected. You're not going to have loose freight on your trailer then. That's what a rub rail is for. Some trailers have a little bit uh, of a different kind. I'll show you uh, if I can find one. Like this one's kind of built right onto the trailer, right? It's part of the trailer. Let's go over here to this trailer over here. You guys are making me run. Oh, look at this trucker run. Here he goes. This is trailer 501. It's a Manac model. It has a little bit of a different kind of rub rail and it's not as strong. See this here? This is what a lot of trailers have. And it's just sort of welded on here. You don't connect your straps onto this because these welds aren't designed to hold that kind of weight, right? That's not what this rub rail is here for. This rub rail is here to protect your straps in case you get sideswiped or something hits the side of your trailer. You connect the, the straps to the frame under here, under the trailer. I hook them right on here, right there. I see a lot of people hooking straps onto this kind of a rub rail. In the case of an accident, that rub rail is just gonna rip right off and then your load is loose, unsecured, and off you go. Explaining why you didn't secure your load properly and also having to pay all the fines for not securing it properly. Now it doesn't happen often. It depends on the ambitions of the DOT officer pulling you over. But if he does see straps, Outside of the rub rail, it's a few hundred dollar fine for each strap, and it's a separate infraction for each strap. Not only does that go on your record as a driver, it goes on your company's record as well. So it's very important. Straps inside the rub rail. Always, unless if there is absolutely no other way, let's say you have a wide load that sticks out to here. Well, you can't exactly go here and then up under in there. There are exceptions within reason, right? And it all depends on the DOT officer that that you're uh, dealing with. But with a legal load that's not wide, straps inside the rub rail, just in case, you know, something rubs up against you, you don't want that to rip those straps off. There's your lesson for today. Lessons with Trucker Josh. Tried to explain myself a little better that time. How did I do? Does that make sense now? Why you put the straps inside the rub rail? Never over, never over. In rare circumstances, there are exceptions. Okay, I shouldn't say never, never, never say never, right? There are exceptions. But they better be pretty obvious exceptions. Otherwise you get one of those DOT guys who's like over ambitious and like ticket happy. They'll write you up a ticket for each and every strap. And I think it's like 200, 280 bucks US per, per infraction. I think, I know a couple of guys that got nailed with this. This is why I started talking about this, right? And this is why I'm repeating it again because my comment section sort of pushed back against it a little bit. I know a few guys now that have gotten tickets for putting their straps over the outside of the, of the rub rail. And they're very expensive. And it's just, huh, the more you know, right? The more you know. gonna tighten this up here and we'll be uh, off to the races. This is kind of a long clip already. You guys still watching? Congratulations. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Go ahead, do it right now. Give yourself a pat on the back. Still watching. Thank you. I should have tightened it on the other side. That's what I'll do. I'm too close to these trailers here. 
my bar is just too big you know what i mean i need more space lots of space here Beautiful. I'm also kind of excited. I've ordered new marker lights for the top two rows. You'll notice my uh, the center three on the bottom row here on our left right now. See how dim it is? It's not burnt out. Some people think it's burnt out. It's not burnt out, but it's on its way out. And on the top row, on the other side in the center, the right center one is also on its way out. So I have uh, ordered ones to match my rear lights with the, uh, they're amber, with a clear lens. I've also ordered matching fender lights like this, also with the clear lens to match those and to match the, the rear lights. They aren't the dual revolutions that go blue. We're gonna move towards those in the future, but for now, for now I need to, uh, I need to do something about that. And I can't just replace one because they're all kind of malfunctioning. There's supposed to be LED lights around all around the edge, the bottom, and they're all not working properly. They're working well enough, but I want them to work properly. So that's our newest thing. Uh, they should be here uh, in a couple weeks. Got a whole bunch of stuff to do. I gotta install those yet. I got new backup lights from uh, RC Man. It's his uh, YouTube handle. I got them in my shop. It's gonna replace these with nice bright LEDs. And I've also got another set of uh, LED floodlights that are gonna be going on top of my headache rack up here. You see, there already is one here. See? But uh, the one on that side that matched it broke off. So I don't use this, but I'm gonna replace that and that. So I'll have two on each side, bright LED lights that'll illuminate everything back here and I've also got uh, train horns yet that is a project in the works all right guys <sighs> oops the windows open sorry old blue did that again so that's it I'm gonna take this trailer over to Kenora and uh, I'll talk to you there at the end of our day and uh, touch base with you then. That's that everybody. The day is over, another day. 1,048 kilometers behind us today. What is that, about uh, 630 miles, let's say. 650 miles. So we're back here, we're gonna pick up lumber again tomorrow. We're not going to that culvert place, we're going, uh, we're here at the lumber place. Gonna pick up some lumber, uh, gotta load it up in the morning. Gonna unload that the next day, in the morning. And then after that, we have a load waiting for us, Thief River Falls. And that we just take to our yard again, drop it there, and go home. So you may or may not have noticed, uh, my vlogs are gonna be uh, a few days behind. Sometimes they're a few days behind, sometimes they're more than a few days behind. Just in the, uh, in the spirit of internet safety, it's best that the internet never knows exactly where you are, right? Thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We make new videos all the time of life out here on the road between Canada and the US. Love to have you as part of our crew here. We've been growing fast, which is awesome. So all of you new people, welcome here. Everyone's welcome. You wanna know more about me, you wanna know how to contact me uh, and get a hold of me, find me on other social media platforms. All that info, including where I get my music from, Anything you need to know is down below the description of every single video. Just click the show more button and all the info is down there. I get a lot of questions in my comment section that I don't even answer. If I don't answer you, check to see if it's in the description of the video. It's probably there. Because uh, I can't go through and answer all the questions. I've already answered it in the description. So find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I even have a TikTok. Uh, I have a... Uh, I have a Snapchat, I don't use it anymore. I haven't even opened the app in like 
almost a year probably, six months or so. Uh, you can add me if you want. I mean, I don't don't use it, but yeah, down below in the description. I'll see you in tomorrow's video, and I'll see you in the comment section down below this video.